Thank you for joining us at Hotbird 406. We're getting ready for our second video in the series of Jasmine and her rings. Well, Jake, we got that engine all tore down now. We got the pistons, the heads off, the jugs off. We decided to go ahead and pull the pistons off of the connecting rods. We're going to install the rings on the bench and, and then put the assembly together that way. Um, we uh, have already file fit the gapless rings. We had to uh, slide them in the uh, jugs, measure the gap, grind them very carefully, measure the gap, grind them very carefully, measure the gap till we got it right. We've got that all ready to go, so uh, we'll be getting this put together. You think that engine's going to run again? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, we've got her parked before. I'm sure she'll run again. Stay tuned, and we'll see what happens. Okay, welcome back, Hot Rodders and Harley Riders. It's been a week since we've worked on Jasmine, and we're excited to finally get this thing together. We've got a little more prep work to do with the pistons. Use the, on the front jug here, the front piston, compared to the back one, it looks like we've got a little bit of piston slap. And I'm not sure where that's coming from because both pistons and both jugs mic exactly the same. The pins fit the same in the connecting rods, and I'm not sure what that's all about. But at any rate, we've got a little more prep work to do. We had to file fit the uh, total seal gapless second rings, and uh, we've got that done, and they're ready to install. We're going to check the fit on the pistons, and then I'm going to show you a little trick. Ordinarily, the pistons would go on the connecting rods, pin would be inserted, and then there's a clip that goes in here, and then you would have to compress the, the rings with a compressor similar to this, which you would have to put on upside down. And then try to install the jug down through the studs onto the piston. And I've done it that way many times, and it's kind of a pain, but I'm gonna show you a, a slick trick here that'll make it a lot easier to do that. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Quick tip here, you can take an old piston ring and you can drag it in the groove carefully or you can take a broken piston ring and use the edge of it to clean the carbon out of the groove. Now the back piston doesn't have much carbon in the groove at all, it looks, looks pretty good. And uh, the back piston just shows a little bit of wear here on the skirt, but it wasn't slapping. We had an issue with the front jug and the piston ring gaps. Okay, we are back. We ran out of battery yesterday when we were working on this. And I didn't have a spare, so I had to charge this one up. And I was not going to just not do anything. So... Jacob and I worked on this. We got the pistons on. We uh, put the rings on the pistons. And we then used a ring compressor to insert the pistons into the jugs. <clears throat> we did that on the bench. <clears throat> then we brought the jugs with the pistons inserted and the rings gap where they should be uh, back here to the engine block. And we... Uh, positioned the the pistons. Now with the back jug we had to sink the piston into the jug a little bit to clear the studs and then we uh, put the jug over where it should be and we used a soft mallet handle to knock the piston out of the jug at the bottom enough just to line up the piston with the connecting rod. We inserted the wrist pins then and put the uh, the circle clip lock retainer that retains the wrist pin in and then went ahead and put the, the the jugs down on of course with the new gasket between the bottom of the jug and the uh, block 
and then we uh, did that to the front. The front went in uh, a lot easier, the front jug, than the, than the rear did. We then put the heads on and torqued them with the pushrod tubes, putting new O-rings in the pushrod tubes. We've got the uh, push rods in correctly. As you can see, they're color coded so that the in the front jug, the exhaust is the green, has the green paint. The intake push rod has the yellow. And then on the rear jug, you can barely see it, but the intake, which is the, the one closest to the carburetor, is blue, and the exhaust is purple. And they do this because these are staggered and they're different lengths. And if you don't get the right push rod in with the right valve, you're going to have issues with uh, possibly a valve that doesn't close. And if it doesn't seat and close, you're either going to have intake going through the exhaust and no compression, or you're going to have intake going through back through the intake and backfiring. Either way, the engine's not going to run. <clears throat> so it's vital to make sure that these get put in the right uh, positions. So we've got that ready to go. We're going to retorque the heads again, make sure that the torque is what it's supposed to be. And then we're going to assemble the rocker assembly. We've already got the intake and the carb on. Um, we've got to, once we get the uh, rocker assembly on, we'll hook up the linkage to the carburetor. And then we'll uh, get the valve covers on. And next will be the... Uh, upper torque arm and then we'll finish putting the intake assembly on and the exhaust, the fuel tank, spark plugs, spark plug wires, all that good stuff, the final little bits of it. So it shouldn't be too long. We're going to uh, work on this for a little bit and then we will be back with an update. Okay, Jacob is working on gaskets and the meantime Linkage attached <coughs> to the cardboard meter. It's so much fun because it's a push pull. Cable should be tight and get where it's supposed to. Should work, and it does. Love it when a plane comes together. Soon, that we're going to call Cool Tools, and then we're going to have another segment called Go Fast Goodies, where not only do we review tools, but we review the Go Fast Goodies, like you know, carburetors, fuel injection. Blowers, turbos, yeah. intakes, exhaust, all those good Like things. that intake manifold you've got for the uh, car? Yes. For the hot bird? Yep. Oh, there we go. These are really nice from Cornwall. <clears throat> Very nice. Their, their bits, their drivers, what, what makes these really nice is the fact that you can use a quarter drive to drive them instead of having to use a socket and a bit. But they also are big enough that you can use them like a thumb screw. Also, they're neural so that you can use pliers or channel locks to get things tightened down. So, it's not, this isn't something you even think about getting until you need it. And then when you need it, it's, wow, this saved the day. And look how this, this fits right in there. There's no room for, to put a bit in there. If you had a bit, and then you would have to try and, and hold that and turn it with a wrench, where this with the knurl went right in. Now I'm going to take these channel locks and I'm going to tighten it on down. so that it doesn't come out. 
if that were to come out, uh, the throttle cable would quit working and we would be having a really bad day. Mm -hmm. I don't like having really bad days. Well, you wouldn't, I would on the road. So, thank you, Cornwell Tools. We'll be looking forward to your sponsor. Okay, Jake, we need <laughs> the gaskets for the front and back. We need to go in here. Here's the back one, and the gaskets, the gaskets are on the bottom. We've got a lot of this together now. We we'll just have to finish with the slide this through. Try and set it down squarely. still some gas in the carburetor, so we may see if it'll fire. I'm not going to let it run without the exhaust on it. Without the exhaust. It Ooh. does fire. Yep, we're glad for that. You can even see the uh, little pumps of fire coming out of the exhaust. Okay. Yeah. Let's finish putting up this together so we can ride it. We're going to change the oil too. Should have changed the oil before we fired it, but I want to see if it would fire. All right, let's get to work. Not much to go. Uh, one of those is a carburetor gasket. It goes here. Uh, actually, two of those might be that we're going to need out of that kit on your side that fell on the floor. And then we've got to set this back down to drain the oil because the lift is in the way of draining the oil with it up here. But while it's up in the air, you should put the exhaust on. Okay. All right. Well, Jake, we're going to run out to Hales Harley Davidson and get an oil filter. We got our oil. Castrol GTX. Twenty fifty recommended by Rotors Racing. 
who build Harley racing engines and bikes and have held Harley Davidson land speed records. So they recommend against synthetic oil for roller bearing type bearings. And so we're going to follow their lead. Haven't had any issues with any of the engines that we've used non-synthetic oil in. We're, our, we're heading out to Hales, Harley Davidson here in Mansfield to get uh, the oil filter. We've got our oil for the oil change when we're done and uh, we've got to change the oil filter too. We've got to uh, check and see if they've got any breakout CVOs as well. All right, Hales Harley Davidson. Here we go. Yeah, demo rides today, the sign says, but I doubt they've got any breakout CVOs. Well, maybe today we'll get lucky. I don't know. I don't want to ride one unless I... If I ride it and I like it, then I'm going to want to get one. And I don't want to want one. I don't want to covet a motorcycle. That would yep. be bad. Yep, that's one of the Ten Commandments. Yeah, thou shalt not covet. Because if you covet too much, then that might lead to thou shalt not steal. And we definitely don't want to break that one either. <laughs> yep. Anyway, what? Um, that, uh, man, uh, that's a pain on that. No, <laughs> that's Thank you, Jake. Oh, that new Harley smell. Well, we found this one for you. Look at this trike. This is a 2015. It's got a little over 12,000 miles on it. A lot of extra chrome. The rims are nice. Paint's nice. This this would be good for you. I wish I could afford it. No, it doesn't have the big trunk, but it's got the little one. It's sporty looking. I know you want the fairing on the front, but it still looks pretty good. Oh, this is a V-Rod. $10,000. Yeah. It's a nice bike. Yeah, I found this mystery combo. I wonder what's in there. <laughs> Surprise pop. 25 cents. Probably doesn't have any fizz. There you go. It's a white glide. Hales has got <clears throat> tacos today. Well, we got a oil filter. This time, I got a curl one instead of a black one. Oh, that'll add to Jasmine's treasure like chrome everywhere on her. Yeah. Bling! Yep, that's what the guy said in there. Adding to the bling. Yeah, that bike's got some bling on her. We also got some tacos way we were in there. Yeah, it's pretty good. Got some food. Got to sit on a breakout CBO. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ride one. 
the seat was very comfortable. I was surprised. You could demo ride today. Well, I don't know you're only demo riding, but they've got out to demo ride. If, if I were seriously interested in buying one, I would actually test drive it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to spend $19,000, and it's not the color I like. If I were going to spend any money at all, I'd buy the one at Pharaoh's. It's $1,000 less. It's the color that I like, yeah, and it's got less miles. Okay, we've got Jasmine back together, all hooked up. You heard it fire with ether when it was on the bike stand. We put it down, and we're getting ready to see if everything is going to work or not so I'm gonna have Jacob you ready to hear this thing start yep you think it's gonna start hopefully all right well get on her and fire her up and let's see what happens How's it run? Amazing. It sounds better. I can tell you that. It uh, sounds way better. Throttle response? Yep. Better than before? Oh yeah. You can definitely feel the difference when you're on the bike. Okay. Alright, well fire it up and we'll take it back in and check things out. We've got Jasmine all put back together. 
and she's running good. You don't have any issues or problems, no upper cylinder noise, and there's only one thing left for us to do, father and son ride. Yeah. Well, until next time, thanks for watching Hotbird 406. Remember, love God, love each other, and love your ride.